What is up YouTube? My name is James. I'm bringing you guys a brand new video here today. And today I'm bringing you guys a video on how to create the most epic fake sunsets. So, pretty much since I've been making photos, I love sunsets. And Ali recently figured out how to make amazing fake sunsets. Like, right before sunset, like when it's still like bright out, it's still daylight out, and it's still a little blue, but you still got a tint of yellow in there. You can still make sunset photos, and it's really, really cool. So in this video, I have time to show you guys. As always, the raw file is in the link in the description below for you to download through Dropbox. Be sure to follow along, help yourself out. Trust me, it'll help you learn faster if you follow along with the photo and edit it as I do. Also, I'm going to be making a new video called Critiquing My Subscribers Photos on Instagram. So if you want to be part of that, be sure to comment down below. Don't comment on your Instagram, just be sure to look out on my Instagram, on my story, for me to announce that I'm going to be doing it, and then you can reply to that story with your Instagram and such and let me know that you want to be a part of it. That's going to be my next video for next week, hopefully. And just real quickly, I just want to apologize for the lack of videos lately. College has just been, like, really, really busy. Um, it's just, it's just been, honestly, it's been so busy. I have so much to do. I'm doing so much shooting that making videos is just hard. It's hard to find time to make videos. And also, the fact that YouTube kind of slowed down for me a lot this month. My subscribers got cut by two-thirds. And it really, really sucks to see that. So, um, seeing that lack of growth is kind of demotivating. But anyway, I'm going to try to bring back the videos more often. Try to maybe bring back some vlogs too. Some behind the scenes on shoots. I've been getting the assistance for my shoots. So I might be able to have them recorded and stuff like that. So that can be really, really fun. And maybe a good way for you guys to learn hands-on like what exactly I'm doing in my photo shoots to actually take the pictures themselves. I think that'd be really cool. But anyway guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And lastly guys, my name is James. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Okay, so here's the photo we're editing today. This photo is on the Manhattan Bridge overlooking this street in Chinatown. It's really dope. You got the, um, the uh, Freedom Tower in the background just overlooking some other buildings. And the sunset's actually really, really sick. And the original is actually nothing like the final product in the sense that the sunset is completely fake. So, again, as always, the link to the raw file is in the description below. It's a link to the Dropbox. You can download it, follow along, do that stuff. to help you learn better. Trust me, I've done it a lot in the past. So, we're going to head straight into this edit. This is the original here that we're working with, and that this is turning into this. This is probably one of my favorite photos I've ever taken, so I'm really excited to show you guys how to edit this one today. So, the first thing we're going to do when we get straight into this photo is we're going to go to our transform and just rotate the photo and make sure make sure the uh, the crop is perfect for what we want to work with. So we're going to make this a 2.4 right around there. That makes the uh, the horizon straight about, hopefully. And then we're going to bring the crop in here and we're going to just bring it down like that right there so that little yellow line down the street is completely centered so that is our crop that we're going to be working with today um, now we're going to go straight down to our camera calibration because I realized that camera calibration is probably it's probably the most important thing to work with first when you're doing sunsets because all the colors you want to make sure that you're what you want to work with before you start going into hues and temperatures and all that stuff like that so Right away, we're going to be going into negative 36 red primaries here. We're making the picture a bit more red. As you can see, you already got some more red in the clouds. If you Command-Z it, you get the clouds turn a little more red to orange. So we're going to bring that around to negative 36, negative 37, same shit. And the saturation to plus 100. So as you can see, you're already getting that color out of the clouds. Now we're bringing our green primaries to negative 20. Just like that. And the saturation to around plus 10. So, right there. And next is our blue primaries around to negative 17. So, that is what we're working with straight up. Those are our colors. And now we're going to go straight back to the temperature and start working back from the top to the bottom. So, our temperature is going to be around 9,100 ish, like right around here. 9,143 is good. We want this photo to be very, very warm. The original is very, very. Sorry, the final product is very warm, so you want to make this a very warm photo. And next, the tint is going to be around plus 14, just plus 4, what it already was. We're going to do that manually here. Type that in, plus 14, get that purple tint a little bit, just a tad. 
And next, we're going to be going to highlights, negative 100, right straight up. Now we get really those details out of those clouds, but we're going to bring it back in a little bit. Um, shadows around plus 5, nothing crazy, just a little bit of modification to make it perfect. And then our whites are going to be around plus 45, get more, um, I guess like, I don't even know how to describe it, like more just brightness and exposure out of the clouds and stuff like that, where the highlights aren't, where the whites are present. And next, blacks are going to be around 19. Just like that, make it a little more uh, open, a little more um, brighter in the um, darker areas of the photo. Next, we're going to be doing clarity. Is it our negative 15? I like negative clarity lately. It just gives the fo photo more of a dreamy, soft vibe rather than a, like a harsh one. Or if the clarity was up like this, it looked like that. And I don't really like those photos anymore, to be honest. I like more softer photos. And next, our vibrance is be around plus 28, just like that, to get more color out of the whole photo. Saturation zero. Um, I don't want to saturation that much. Next is the tone curve. We got our tone curve at the usual, what I usually have is. So if you watch the videos, you know usually where I keep it. We're going to be putting our first one around right here. Bringing another uh, point around right here or so. Then another one around right here. And another one right here. So as you can see, this completely de destroyed the photo. But it's going to come back a little bit. Trust me, we're going to be doing a lot of brushes. And it's going to make the photo look very, very, very good. So now to the HSL. We're going to be making our yellows around negative 25. Um, get those yellows a little more orange. And we're not going to touch any more of the hues. Then we're going to go into the saturations and make our everything from aquas down around negative 60 or so uh, desaturation. Just get rid of those. Get rid of those cool colors out of here. Get rid of those cool colors. Make the purples a little less. And next, our uh, luminances, we're going to bring our reds to around plus 59, like that. Our oranges to around plus 17. Our yellows to around negative 38. And everything from greens to purples around plus 45. So around like right here. Oh, around right there, just like so. And so now we're going to be going to our split toning right here. Our split toning is very simple. Um, all we did was All I did was the highlights and not the shadows. So our highlights are going to be around a, a 37 and our saturation will be around a 6. And that gives the, total, the photo more of like a warm yellowish orange tone um, to the highlights and stuff. As you can see it's right here on the uh, spectrum. Next we're going to be going to the uh, vignetting. We're just neg this is a, a simple negative 7 vignetting. I usually don't do vignetting to the end but, but because you know we are, uh, d we are going in order here, um, do the vignetting now. And that's it for the basic edit. It's pretty simple. Um, but now we have to go to the brushes. The brushes are very, 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 very OD in this photo. I have about about six of them. And the first one is the, probably the worst one. It's, a, it's a, a big brush. It's just a lot of stuff. So we're just going to go over everything. Go over everything except for the sky. So everything in the street is just getting brushed. All the buildings, everything. It's just way, 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 way too dark. So we're going to make the brush small now, and we're just going to go over the uh, the buildings here, the edge. We don't want to get the feathering on the sky. So we want to go very, very carefully. Just like this. We're going to have to do some deleting as well on erasing. So we'll go do that in a second once we finish this. Because it's not going to be perfect. We're not very zoomed in at all. So we're just going for a, a real quick job here. And just like that, we're finished. Now we're just going to come and fill everything up here. Just like that. Now let's uh, check our brush here and see what we're at. See if we missed any spots. Oh, we missed a lot of spots. That's not good. <laughs> so we're just going to go over the bottom here, over here in this corner. All of this we're going to brush in. And let's see where we're at now. We still missed a lot here. I missed all of this here. Actually, let's just bump the exposure up super high or super dark. And see if we missed anything. It doesn't look like we missed anything. Let's go back to our brush here and see if there's anything else left. Just the sides here. Cool. Honestly, that look, th this whole building here looks pretty cool with the high exposure, but like that's not the setting we're trying to go to. So we're going to bring this here to around 1.14, the exposure. Our temperature is going to be at a 4. 
our contrast is going to be at a negative 32. And then our shadows are going to be zero. Our highlights will be zero. Our clarity will be a negative 40. Very, very low clarity. I want everything to be very, very soft. And our saturation is going to be at negative 9. So that's what I'm really going for here. Um, I still feel that I'm not, I'm not too much of a fan of how bright it is. Let's look at the last photo we took. I just feel like the other photos were much, much just darker overall. So let's go back to that old photo and see what it looks like. Because even in the previews down here, yeah, it's just darker and it's more saturated, it seems like. So what I think I want to do is, because no other brushes affect all the whole all of this here. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to the other photo we just were at, the one we're editing right now. And we're just going to go into the brush again and just edit it, make it more, con make add more contrast, make it a little more darker and some more saturation so let's do that right now let's make our contrast a little darker our exposure a little darker and our saturation a bit higher just like that and that's kind of what we had in the last photo it looks pretty similar so now what I want to do is I want to go to our erase tool here and we're gonna zoom in about a one-to-one -one. should be good enough honestly we're not going too technical here because this is a tutorial if you're editing a photo you can go and go in super technically and do all that but right now we're just going trying to do a real quick job here erasing the sky so and this is a very important part of the whole edit you need to do this otherwise it's just gonna look messy and it's not gonna look clean it's gonna look like you rushed it and you don't want that to happen so just real nicely just go around the buildings here it's gonna be worse around the pointed buildings like these ones like 70 pine all that Bring that right there. Now we're going to go at the other side of the photo and we're going to continue around here. The Freedom Tower usually gets it pretty badly. And keep going around. This is probably the most boring part because I don't think I'll talk about while I'm doing this. So it can get pretty annoying. I might do some time lapses like this for this, for this stuff in the future, honestly. I feel like that would just be easier. Just do it real quick, show you guys the, the basics of it, and then, yeah, be done. But anyway, that's pretty much it for that. Um, we got over, got all that done. Now we're going to go into the next brush. The next brushes are pretty simple. We're just taking a new brush right here. We're going to brush all of this here. And we're just going to make it brighter. Pretty simple. 0.31 exposure. I just wanted a little brighter, want some more detail on the streets, and etc. Make the temperature around a plus 4, which is what I had in the original. And now the next brush is going to be a little more weirder, but nothing more difficult. We're brushing a little bit more over here. A little bit more on this side of the street. A little bit over here. A little bit up here. And then a little bit right here. And we're just going to again up the exposure just a little bit to around 0.42. And see, now it's a more even exposure, I feel like, throughout the picture. It's a little more, the, the brightness overall is pretty even, and it's nice. Next here, we got the uh, crosswalk here. Um, I, I edited it in the last photo, but honestly, it doesn't need to be edited that much. We're just going to zoom in real quick and just go along the crosswalk. Um, just make I want to make it more white. That's pretty much all I wanted to do. Just make it a little more white. I feel it looks better when it's white. Looks when it's like when it's not as dark. I feel like it looks looks better. So we're just gonna go along here. And keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I really find this fucking boring as shit, but. This is like the, the, these little minute tasks that you have to do, like this brushing or like when you're clone stamping or just like retouching. I don't know. A lot of it can get pretty boring and stuff. So sometimes you just got to find something else to do while you're doing it kind of. Maybe like watch a TV show or like listen to some music, a podcast maybe. That's just what I just do. I usually do a lot of this stuff while I'm just like hanging out with people and like I'll get worked on that way. And keep going. We're almost done here. We're almost done. 
finally. And honestly, it's probably going to look like shit, too. So we're going to have to just delete it anyway. So, all right. So we're done with that. Let's go back to our standard zoom. And we're going to put this at 0.14 exposure. We're going to put it at 50 or 65 highlights. And we're going to put it at around 5 clarity. So as you can see, it's pretty bright. It got a little brighter. As you can see, let's see if I'm going to up the exposure just a little more. Yeah, honestly, that looks pretty cool. So we're going to we're gonna put it around like 0.48 exposure. I think that looks pretty cool. I think that works pretty well with the photo. But now we have sky. We have the sky. So there's not much you have to do to the sky here except for pretty much just make some of these have more yellow tones, I guess you could say. So we're just going to go right along here. And we're just going to make it more yellow. No exposure change, just 23 uh, temperature. Make that those, those clouds a little warmer. Just like so. Now we're going to go in again and just edit all of these clouds once again. And we're just going to make it, oh, again, a warmer tone. This time a 28 temperature. Just like that. And actually, it's a little, it's a little too much, I feel like. For this for this edit, uh, let's go around like a, a ten temperature. Honestly, I don't like it at all. I do not like it at all. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. Honestly, no reason not. No reason to keep it if you don't like it. And then the last, um, the last thing we have here is our freedom tower. It's a little dark here up in the freedom tower, so we're just gonna take a brush and brighten it. Or at least get the sides a little more brighter. Of the exposure, you can't really see it that well because of fucking it hasn't loaded yet because this detail is insane. Because the took with the A7R1, the megapixels is like 30, it's like 36 megapixels, so like the detail is like super, super, super good. So, like, yeah, when you zoom in, it takes a little bit to load because especially my computer isn't that good. So, but anyway, that's pretty much everything right there. I just want to go back in and just do some minor adjustments from the uh, from uh the um, regular basic editing and one thing that I realized what I did wrong I actually forgot to edit the contrast from the beginning so we're just gonna go in here and add plus 51 contrast and look at that that's what we were missing right there that contrast right there that saved everything it saved everything so we're just gonna lower this exposure just a little bit on the freedom tower it's around 0.30 make it less harsh Anyway, that's the photo here, guys. Um, that's pretty much all we did. And we got this awesome, awesome photo. As you can see, the buildings, though, are a little darker on the edges. just because I did a, uh, a, a rush job with the editing on the buildings. When you do it, you just got to do really fine, like, fine-tune it. Make sure it's, like, perfect before you do it. This is what it looks like when you actually fine-tune it. The crop's a little different, too. But, um, yeah, they look pretty much very similar. Very, very similar photos. Um, but pretty much, guys... That's going to be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, be sure to comment on this video if you want to see me uh, do a video on critiquing my subscribers' photos on Instagram. I'm thinking about doing that. And if you want to be a part of that, I'll be posting a story to my Instagram. And you can respond to that whether you want to be a part of it. And like, and I'll check out your Instagram on a video. And I'll tell you what you need to do and do wrong. I'll tell you what you are doing wrong and what you're doing right. Probably be more negative feedback than positive because I believe that to get better you need negative feedback rather than positive reinforcement. You need to be like you need someone to tell you, okay, here's what wrong, here's what's wrong with your photos. This is why you're shit. So don't do that and you'll be better. So I think that's personally what helps for me. So I'm gonna tell I'm gonna be running it pretty much. And lastly, guys, be sure. To, uh, and lastly, guys, my name is James. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.